we're going to turn now to John's Gospel. Um, we've been in John's Gospel for quite a while now, haven't we? One of the four accounts of Jesus' life. And we're going to turn to John chapter 13. Uh, and I'm going to read verses 18 to 30. So John chapter 13, verses 18 to 30. Now, kids, in front of you on your worksheet, you've got some clues as to what is going on in this Bible passage. Just think about that as I read the Bible passage. Just think, what's happening here, all right? Just the, maybe just that one thing. What is happening here? Okay, John 13, verse 18 to verse 30. Jesus is with his disciples and he says, I am not referring to all of you. I know those I have chosen, but this is to fulfill this passage of scripture. He who shared my bread has turned against me. I am telling you now before it happens so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am who I am. Very truly, I tell you, whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me. And whoever accepts me accepts the one who sent me. After he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, very truly I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, ask him which one he means. <clears throat> Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. So Jesus told him, what you are about to do, do quickly. But no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to them. Since Judas had charge of the money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the festival or to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out and it was night. Kids, I've got a quiz for you. Um, adults as well, actually. Um, if we could have the pictures up, that would be great. What I want you to tell me um, is who are, who, who's the, who are the baddies, basically? So who, who are the baddies here? Oh, who are these, for, for starters? Go on, who's the, who are the characters? Tell me who they are. Oh, Mr. McGregor, yeah. Mr. McGregor and Mr. Todd, yes, Mr. Todd. Are they the baddies or the goodies? They're the baddies, yeah, they're the baddies. And Peter Rabbit and his gang, they're the goodies, aren't they? What about, what about this one? Anyone know? Who's the, who's the baddie? Yeah, go Jetters, yeah, a bit CBBs, a bit too much CBBs probably. Anyone know the baddie is here? Do you know? It's quite a hard name to say if you're just learning your words. Anyone? No, just my son. All right, fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> go on, Josh. What? Go on, Pops. Go on. Go on, you said it. That was brilliant. Yeah. Grandmaster Glitch. That's right. Yeah, so he's the baddie. And who are the goodies? Who are the goodies? Come on, even the adults can work this one out. The go, the go generous, that's right, Cynthia. Um, sorry, that was just <laughs> shameful, wasn't it? I don't know why I did that. We'll move on. What about here? Forget about go jetters, move on to Flushed Away. We all get stuff wrong. Um, flushed Away, has anyone seen the film Flushed Away? Yeah, a few of you have seen the Flushed so, so who are the goodies? Who are the goodies? Do you know their names? I can't think what their names are. You can probably point to them. Go on, you just watch so much TV. Go on, go on. Do you know their names? What are their names? Rita. All right, you know. You've seen. Roddy and Rita. So they're the goodies. Yeah, we're getting somewhere. We'll piece it together. I won't take the mickey out of anyone else's accent. Go on. Um, and the baddies. Who are the baddies? Not just Josh. Someone else. Come on. Someone can surely tell me who the baddies are. You can tell by how they look and how they dress. The frogs. Yeah, the frogs. Go on. The green guy, yeah, the green guy, he looks bad, doesn't he? Yeah, there's a, yeah, and I think that guy, there's a bit of a baddie, but sort of not. It all gets a bit complicated, doesn't it? Go on, goodies and baddies. Who are the baddies? Who's the baddie? Go on, Grace. 
<laughs> the White Witch, yeah, she's the baddie, isn't she? And the goodies are Peter, Susan, Edmund, and Lucy. That's right, yeah. Yeah, and also, who else? Aslan, yeah. Yeah, we love Aslan, don't we? Um, what about here? Go on. Baddies. Uh, Saruman, yeah, not salmon. Yeah, Saruman, yeah, yeah. I mean, it depends on you. Yeah, yeah, Saruman, yeah, yeah, Saruman and Sauron. Is that right? And then the goodies are the Fellowship of the Ring, aren't they? All those characters, Gandalf and I don't know, Bill, but all those, all those guys. Um, what about these, goodies or baddies? <laughs> um, <laughs> go on, you got an opinion, go on. Oh, really? Interesting. Controversial. Boris Con Johnson's basically a goodie. Right, okay, interesting. Um, he's a baddie, is he? Okay, let's not get too bogged down there, <laughs> folks. Um, kids, the thing is, as you go through life and as you learn a bit more about life and as you read your Bible, what you start to realise is there isn't really such thing as goodies and baddies. Actually, all of us have got good and bad going on inside of us and in our lives as well. We live in a good world gone wrong, right? We live in a good world gone wrong. And we're people who live in that world, and so in us we have good and we have bad. There's not so much goodies and baddies, but people who do good things and do bad things too. But one way to be bad, really bad, is to betray someone. That's one way to be bad. And that's what we're going to think about this morning, to betray um, someone. And we're going to need some help on this. We're going to think about two things um, this morning. The first thing is this, what is betrayal? Because that's what Jesus says, doesn't he? Verse 18, he says, He who shared my bread has turned against me. Uh, and really there, Jesus is going back to the Old Testament, back to Psalm 41, where David says, even my close friend, someone I trusted, one who shared my bread, has turned against me. And Jesus is saying that's going to happen to him. Someone is going to turn against him. Even someone who's in the meal, eating with him, sharing his bread. And then later on, verse 21, end of verse 21, Jesus says, doesn't he, very truly I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. So I, I want you to just chat amongst yourselves where you are with parents or whoever, whoever you're sat near and just think about this because it's a bit tricky to understand, isn't it? What is betrayal? Or what, what does it mean for someone to betray someone else have a think have a talk amongst yourselves we'll have a bit of music in the background and just have a chat what does it mean when someone betrays someone else Go on then, we'll bring it back together. Um, it's a bit tricky, isn't it? It's a little bit tricky. Go on, give me some clues, give me some ideas. What, what does it mean for someone to betray someone? We have some good ideas over here. But what, what, what does it mean? Someone you thought you could trust. Yes. 
Yes, a bit like what Jesus says in the psalm. Yes, someone I trusted. You thought you could trust them, but then they, they go against you, turn against you. Yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah, to turn your back on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good, yeah. Uh, any, other, any other thoughts? Any other ways of putting it? Just not consider the person's feelings. Yeah, betray their... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's helpful. Yeah, Jesus loses the language of turning against, doesn't he? Um, go on, go on. Oh, yeah, being thrown under the bus. Yeah, we use those expressions, don't we? Thrown under the bus, uh, stabbed in the back. Um, uh, what else do we say to describe being betrayed? Anything else? Turncoat, yeah, yeah. We said, didn't we, so it's someone, someone helping the people who are against you. They go and they help those who are against you. That's betrayal, isn't it? Especially, like you say, if there's someone you trusted, there's someone close to you, they're a friend, or their friend becomes an enemy, or something like that. Yeah, very helpful. Any other thoughts? Very good. It's helpful. A betrayal of trust, a betrayal of uh, information, or handing you over. That's another thing, isn't it? And that's what happens to Jesus later on, isn't it? He's handed over to his enemies. He's betrayed to his enemies. You know, the key thing is verse 21, isn't it? Jesus says in verse 21, very truly, I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. It's someone close, like we said. It's a friend. It's someone that he trusts. They're kind of on his team and they're sharing his bread. They're, they're you know, eating together, kind of living together, but they walk out on Jesus, they turn against him, they betray him. Now, what about you? Because I guess as you go on in life, this might happen to you. Uh, it might happen. Uh, maybe, kids, you have a, a friend who turns against you. Maybe that's even happened this week. You've got a friend who suddenly turns against you. They're against you. Uh, or adults, you've had that experience where someone has betrayed you. You have felt betrayed, a betrayal of trust. Uh, they've turned away from you, they've turned against you, or they've walked out on you, or they've kind of left you, abandoned you, or they've, they've handed you over to your enemies, or something like that. We've all um, experienced these things as we go on in life. And the wonderful comfort here is that Jesus has two. Jesus has two. Jesus knows what it feels like to feel betrayed and to be betrayed because someone betrayed him. So if, you're, if you feel like that, if that's been your experience, know and be encouraged that Jesus knows your Saviour knows what it's like to be betrayed, to feel betrayed. Some of you have been betrayed. You've been be betrayed in the past. For some of you, you were betrayed years and years ago, but it still plagues you. It still haunts you. Or, or it still shapes you in some way. And part of how the Bible responds to that is by saying Jesus knows. He's been there. He's not immune. Jesus, your Saviour, knows what it feels like to feel betrayed and to be betrayed, because he was. But who, who betrayed him? That's the big question, isn't it? Um, who is the betrayer? And it's the disciples' question, isn't it? Notice uh, with me, that is what they're asking, isn't it? Who is it, Jesus? Which, which one of us? Wh what's going on here? Who is the betrayer? Uh, now, to understand this, we need to understand a little bit how this meal is working, because Leonardo da Vinci, as good as he was, <laughs> is a little bit misleading. You see, you see how they're all sat along the table there? Uh, and that's not really how they would have been sat for this meal. This is an important meal. It's a special meal. And when you had an important special meal, and you'll see how this helps us in a moment, then you sat around something called a triclinium, which is what this is over here. Or this is my attempt, at least, at, at reproducing a, a Greco-Roman triclinium. Um, so <laughs> here it is over here. Now, could I have some, maybe some kids want to try this table out? There's, there, is, uh, there isn't actually any food on the table, but yeah, we can pretend. Go on, let's have, I don't know, two or three or four or five of you, whatever. C come, come on, because what you're going to see, it's a bit different to the table you're going to sit around at lunchtime. 
All right, so what you've got to do is lie down and face the, and face the thing. You know, like that? Yeah, sort of like that, sort of across the thing. Yeah, that's right. And maybe lean on your, maybe lean on your left. And you just sort of eat like this, yeah? That's, that's, how they, that's what was going on at this meal. That's what the disciples are doing. They're, they're, they're reclining, it says, doesn't it, in the passage. They're reclining around this table. How does it feel? How's it going? Is it all right? Pretend to eat some grapes. And what we could do is get the deacons to come and, like, waft you like this. They'll wanna, <laughs> they, like, cool you down, yeah? Because it's, it's a posh meal. It's a posh dinner. So you just keep eating over there. Um, but this really helps us to understand this because uh, John um, is, is next to Jesus, isn't he? Verse 23, one of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, that's John, that's code for John, um, was reclining next to him. Okay, so what that means is that John is lying down. They, they rested on their left and they ate with their right. So John is reclining like this, eating with his back to Jesus, right? So Jesus is there like with these kids here. They're sort of like this, and there's Jesus is, is behind John. And then Simon Peter uh, uh, says to Jesus, go on, Jesus, ask him. Uh, go on, John, rather, ask him. Ask Jesus, like, who is it? And so then you read, don't you, that, that John leans back to talk to Jesus. Do you see how that's working? A bit like um, uh, in the picture, we've got a picture up here as well. You see some of them have got their backs to each other. So when it says he leaned back, Simon Peter says, John, ask Jesus. And John goes like this, leans back. Jesus is here and he says, Lord, who is it? Who is the betrayer? You see how that works? They're all sat around that table. He says, who is the betrayer? Who is the betrayer? Who is the one who betrays Jesus? Anyone tell me? Who's the character who betrays Jesus? Judas, that's right, isn't it? It's Judas. Judas is the betrayer. He's the betrayer. Now, how does Judas betray Jesus? Anyone know? You won't find it just here, but you, you might know. How does he betray Jesus? Any thoughts? Some of you adults know. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Two things, isn't it? Judas had already made an arrangement with the chief priest that he would hand Jesus over for 30 pieces of silver. And then later on in the story, what Judas does is he leads the soldiers to arrest Jesus. Do you remember we're thinking about what, what, what does it mean to betray? That's it, isn't it? He hands Jesus over to the soldiers and he did it, didn't he? With a kiss. Uh, and ever since that's a, a betrayer's kiss that Judas kissed Jesus and that was the signal and then the soldiers came in and arrested him. That's betrayal. That's a betrayer. That's being betrayed and Jesus was betrayed by Judas. Now, one of the things that this Bible passage does is it gives all of us a warning. And the warning is this. You can be close, but not close to Jesus. Do you see that? Judas was on Jesus' team outwardly. He had a role to play. You know, he was the keeper of the purse and all of that. And he's at the meal and he's with all Jesus' other friends. You would say, well, yeah, this guy's close to Jesus. He was close, but he wasn't close to Jesus. He, he didn't actually have a personal relationship of love with Jesus. He betrayed Jesus. He was, he was near, but he was far away, really on the inside. And that's a warning to all of us. You can be coming to church, you can be in the right place at the right time, you can be like close to Jesus, but not actually close to Jesus at all. It's a challenge and a warning to each one of us. But be encouraged as well this morning. Jesus, here's the comfort and the encouragement. Jesus knows what it's like when someone stabs you in the back, when someone betrays you, when they betray your trust, Jesus knows what that, that's like. And he warns us 
there is a danger that we can be near, close, but far, not actually close to Jesus. Jesus. 